Welcome to the Linda Mood Bell Radio Podcast, where we explore topics in literacy and learning. Hi, I'm Dave Hungerford for Linda Mood Bell. Lance was bright, but he had trouble reading. And then there was Michelle. She didn't understand what she read and sometimes got confused in conversations. Lance and Michelle each had language processing difficulties and both found success at Linda Mood Bell. Is your child like Lance or Michelle? Intensive instruction this summer for reading or comprehension can make the difference of a lifetime in his or her learning. It's not too late. Call today to find a learning center near you, 800-300-1818, or go to lindamoodbell.com. Well, today I'm talking with Jeff, a parent of a first grade daughter who struggled as an emerging reader. So Abigail is one of the most tenacious and determined young ladies that I've ever met. Um, and honestly, she's more determined and never gives up, probably even more than many adults that I know. Um, one story I like to tell is that, you know, we go to a family camp every year uh, up in the Santa Cruz Mountains, and they have climbing walls. There's kid climbing walls and adult climbing walls. And she she got on the adult side after mastering the kid side and uh, spent almost 30 minutes getting to the top to ring the bell on the adult climbing wall as a seven-year-old when she only weighed 42 pounds. And by the time she reached the top, you know, the whole staff and even uh, her older brother is sitting there, you know, cheering her on. She just will not give up until she finally gets there to the top. Um, just uh, has a, a beautiful personality, um, has a kind of a keen sense of equity and, and fairness, is the, f- the family friend maker and the family attorney. Nice. It's good to have a family attorney. Yes. <laughs> and she is siblings. Uh, so her... Uh, her middle name is Rose, so we joke that she is a rose between two thorns. So she has an older brother, Aaron, and a younger brother, Joshua. The middle child being the uh, peacemaker. Yes. So tell me about her, her early academic life. So um, uh, I think all, all, of our, all of our children um, have kind of a, uh, a, a passion to learn things, but it kind of catches fire at different in different seasons and um, at different ages, and we noticed that uh, that Abigail had probably some just difficulty with her letters in preschool um, and mastering her alphabet. And we thought, well, maybe it was just kind of a, a an age thing, and just she just wasn't ready to kind of take that on. And so it didn't really concern us too much. Um, but as she moved into kindergarten. Um, you know, we could see that she was working, starting to work really hard at it because she was using her, um, her determination, her drive. Um, but, uh, her efforts weren't as fruitful in that area, learning her letters and her, um, just even kind of that pre-reading skill of looking at pictures and matching it to words and concepts. Her efforts weren't as fruitful as, uh, her efforts in a lot of other areas, um, and so we started to kind of do different things, whether it was flashcards or little reader pre-reader sets, and we'd go through them and we'd read them. We kind of do all the things that we knew to do as parents. And we could just tell, we could start to tell that she had some, some challenges that were like, there was kind of some obstacle. There was something, there was kind of a block to her learning, um, in that area. How, how did that make her feel at the time? You know, uh, I think it made us as her parents more frustrated, feeling more helpless than it maybe made her feel. She would uh, she would work hard, and she always believes that she can really accomplish things. Um, but we noticed that you know at the end of a school day, uh, she'd get done with a full day of school, and she would sometimes just fall apart. She'd be so tired. She'd you know, start to cry or just kind of throw herself in the car and she'd be asleep by the time she got home. And it was kind of, you know, not, um, not, I would say it's not typical. She was just expending all of her effort to try to use that skill or develop those muscles because so much is dependent on our ability to 
um, recognize letters. So much depends on our ability to read. She's into first grade now. And uh, was there something that she was experiencing at school that maybe the teachers showed some concern or was she falling behind her peers? Well, it was really, um, we noticed that she kept working harder and harder. And the amount of effort that she was expending to just keep up with her peers was not proportional to how much progress she was making. Um, and so because reading is not just a critical skill, it's an essential skill. And we knew that if she was having any, you know, any efforts or obstacles that she was facing learning to read would soon translate and cause her to fall behind in other subjects. And that, you know, a, the healthy struggle of trying to overcome a learning challenge would turn into an unhealthy struggle because she just couldn't keep up. And so we were watching and I didn't, we were watching that kind of unfold. And I, I, we were not sure how much runway we had between, you know, where the watershed point was with between the healthy struggle and the unhealthy struggle. But we knew that that point was approaching. And so Michelle and I started to just poke around to see like what was available or if who else noticed what was going on. And so, you know, we talked with her teacher and we even brought in like a, a student success team and, you know, talked with a school psychologist and a reading specialist and different people um, at the school. And their kind of prognosis was that we just weren't, uh, we needed to just read more age appropriate material with her. Uh, and that uh, because they didn't see that she was really so far below grade level, it wasn't a major concern to her. Uh, it wasn't a major concern to them. And so what we were seeing as kind of a, um, we were trying to be proactive in, in terms of intervening on this problem before it became a real problem. Uh, and, you know, the traditional model has been that kindergarten, second, first, second, third, it's all about that process stuff. And then we move the content and the gap is huge, like you're alluding to, that, that performance gap. And, and even sometimes in younger grades, while she may not be far behind on a standardized test, in the area you're at, it's a competitive environment and can still be far behind peers and where she right. should be. So I'm always, a, I'm a firm believer that um, in, uh, finding experts or professionals um, that have a real like uh, that have expertise in a certain area. And oftentimes that means going to the private sector um, for those services. And our, we had had friends who had um, had children that had experienced through Linda Mood Bell. And so we knew that there was uh, that they were an expert in the field and we weren't really sure if they had something really specific or targeted to the kinds of challenges that Abigail had. But uh, we, we went ahead and made a, an appointment to have her assessed by uh, one of the consultants at the Learning Center at Linda Mood Bell. And after spending a, you know, a few hours and doing an assessment, we met with the people at Linda Mood Bell and they identified exactly what Michelle and I had been seeing but didn't have the language to articulate that she had like a symbol imagery deficit and that we, they, uh, that she needed um, to work on being able to build images and vision to be able to visualize not only letters, but pictures and really exercise that muscle in a new way. And that that would kind of unlock her potential in reading, but in also other areas. And that all of the symptoms and the different things that we had saw or we had seen um, they were able to just nail right on the head and gave us a language like to really define what was going on. And Michelle and I came away with, wow, I don't know what it's going to take, but these people know our daughter and see like, we're not crazy. Um, you know, we, we kind of, after, after working with some of the, the folks at the school who are very well intentioned, um, we just like, are we are we crazy? Are we just kind of making a mountain out of a molehill? Um, and uh, the, the, the fact is, is that at the assessment as a first grader, she was still um, had significant symbol imagery deficits and was really only a pre-reader and had, you know, not, um, 
She did not have the tools to succeed. And we were accurate that she was approaching that watershed point of it was going to become an unhealthy struggle in a variety of ways. Anything uh, unexpected other than the language come out of that meeting about the assessment? I think what came out of that for us that was unexpected is that there was a relatively easy solution to the problem. Um, and, you know, oftentimes we're, we're trained to think that things that seem too good to be true um, are probably smoke and mirrors. Um, and in this case, it seemed like, you know, somebody just pulled off the blinders and we were able to see, uh, you know, the problem for what it really was and that there was a very simple and straightforward approach to solving it. Um, and really providing some help to Abigail. It doesn't sound like there was too much hesitation after that to to move forward with that investment. Um, no, so we we looked at it. It was definitely a significant sacrifice, a significant investment to make. Um, and we thought that um, if we were able to get even seventy or eighty percent of what was predicted, that it would be a well worthwhile investment. So at that point, um, it wasn't a question of if we would move forward. Um, it was just how were we going to make it work. What was her schedule when she started? Was it a four hour a day, a two hour a day? So um, the, the schedule, the recommendation was for about a hundred hours of one-on-one -on -one, uh, training. And so we set that up uh, with, you know, going two hours a day, five days a week for eight weeks. And spring break was in the middle, so we uh, we did four hours a day um, for that for that week, kind of in the middle. How did that work out? Was that something she enjoyed? About six weeks in, I found Abigail reading a second grade book to her brother Joshua, her little brother Joshua, on her bed. And that just was not even remotely possible only six weeks prior. I mean, she couldn't even have read the book on her own, let alone have her little brother who's four bring a second grade reading book to her and say, Abigail, would you read this to me? And then snuggle up next to her and her having the confidence to just read a second grade book um, that her brother picked out. Uh, and be able and to be able to read it fluently and confidently enough with the right inflection and, and at a pace that uh, her little brother would stay interested um, and feel like she was you know he she was taking care of him and so for me like that's what Linda Mood Bell means to me is in six weeks it wasn't even the program wasn't even over Abigail went from struggling through pre-reading kind of kindergarten level stuff to being able to read second grade material brought by and picked by an, her sibling uh, in an almost improvisational way. And that was just so dramatic. And, you know, to see her, her face light up on a daily basis with the progress that she was making, it was life changing for our family, in addition to just being transformational for her. So she is about to head into summer. Do you feel confident that she will this is going to be something that's sustained? Um, Abigail has really developed a love of reading. I mean, she, on the way home from Linda Mood Bell, she'll take a book and she'll read to me in the car for 30 or 40 minutes at a time. Um, and we'll find her reading books on her own and uh, getting enjoyment out of getting enjoyment out of it, not just because she's been told to read, um, but because she enjoys reading and enjoys the stories herself. And so I know that, uh, you know, for us, um, it, it was, it was not just a, you know, a temporary intervention. It was a, you know, it was a, it was a watershed moment for us. It was a, a transformational shift, um, in her learning journey. So that, that schedule sounded pretty intense that you had two hours a day and for a week, at least four hours a day. Uh, was Abigail able to get any enjoyment out of it while she was doing it, going through the process? Yeah, that was actually the amazing thing. Um, we, we thought that signing her up for this program, you know, we were going to have to pull her out from school a little bit. And we thought that just it was going to be too much. Like, I mean, she was already getting tired at the end of school days and then tacking on some intensive work and training at the end 
um, of the day, every day, we thought that was, it was just going to be too much. But it was actually just so energizing for her. I mean, she loved going. She loved going every day. She talked about her favorite clinicians and her favorite teachers and um, and how much uh, how rewarding it was and uh, how much praise she received and how much they liked her. Um, and so we have a family tradition um, at dinner time where we all go around the table and say, um, you know, Abigail, best part of your day, go. And then each person will have to share the best part of their day, and then they get to popcorn and call on somebody else in the family. And every day while we were doing Linda Mood Bell, Abigail's best part of her day was Linda Mood Bell. I want to thank Jeff and his daughter for sharing their story. You can see a video of both of them on the Linda Mood Bell YouTube page that documents this story. And thank you for listening to the Linda Mood Bell radio podcast. Find more episodes and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Follow Linda Mood Bell on Twitter or on Facebook. We are Linda Mood Bell.